Welcome to the Black Bibliophile Podcast. Black Bibliophile is a podcast where I, Jazz, read and talk about popular and little known books, comics, zines, and authors. To quote Haruki Murakami, if you only read the books that everyone else is reading, you can only think what everyone else is thinking. And with that, let's start the show. Welcome back to the Black Bibliophile Podcast. This is me, Jazz. And this week, I'm going to be talking about Easy Street by Ron Perlman. This episode is going to be uh, like a short stories episode. Um, One of my shorter ones. I'm trying to get back into the longer form episodes, but to try to get an episode out every week, we're going to have one episode where it's a short stories episode. And then the next episode is going to have the long form episode. So, yeah. So this week I'm covering Easy Street by Ron Perlman, which is an autobiographic, autobiographic, an autobiography about his life and growing up. Ron Perlman is an actor who I guess he's most famous for his role as Hellboy in the Hellboy movies. And he was also in the show Sons of Anarchy. So look him up if you're not sure who I'm talking about, but he's a really great actor and a cool, nice guy. Um, I started reading and I'm using like quotation marks because honestly I downloaded this book on Audible because my mom is a huge Ron Perlman fan like she loves everything he's been in she was like there in the was it the 80s I think it was the 80s in the 80s when Beauty and the Beast came out and she was like hell bent into like that show like that's all we would we have it on tape and shit like we would watch that and then when he was in Sons of Anarchy which is like one of her favorite shows mom's a TV junkie so she loves Ron Perlman and she's followed his movie career she's followed his TV career and then she started working and she had to commute far commute like I don't know two three hours to and from work so I was like oh you can just log into my audible and listen to audiobooks and I she wanted to me to download easy street which is his autobiography so that's why that's how I came across this book because I have fibromyalgia and so at night I cannot sleep sometimes because of the pain is so bad and especially with my back pain that I've been having since before I had those two spine surgeries and then like recently before the spine surgery the pain in my back and then like the fibril pain was making it almost impossible for me to speak to speak to sleep so I know this is rambling but I'm trying to get to how I came to read this book so basically one night I was like I can't sleep and I remember a good way to get me to relax, I would listen to the um, Windup Bird Chronicle audiobook because the dude who narrates it has a really soothing voice. So the audiobook for Easy Street is narrated by Ron Perlman himself, which is pretty dope. And I was like, I'll just listen to this. He has like a deep, like baritone voice, and that usually calms me down. So I began to listen to his book over like a couple of nights and his book would actually like soothe me enough to make me fall asleep. It was in between listening to Easy Street and LeVar Burton's podcast, LeVar Reads. So check that out if you guys haven't checked LeVar Burton's podcast out. It's pretty amazing. And he just reads short stories and shit is super calming and it has like sound effects it's amazing all audiobooks should sound like his short story readings because the production value on his stuff is amazing anyways i digress back to easy street and ron perlman so ron perlman narrates this and i was like listening to it and it was helping me fall asleep and all that stuff not saying the book is boring but it's just him talking about his life and it's soothing and his challenges with mental health. So that's how I came across easy street. 
my initial overall thoughts of the book, the book is really great. Um, I enjoyed his stories and his outlooks on life. And I really enjoy how open he is because not many actors would be this open. So for example, I read Rob Lowe's, um, autobiography a while back and that book is really good too, but it's not, it doesn't delve into his psyche and who he is as a point, as a person. It's basically him telling you about his life and like crazy ex- escapades he like got into and like shit, like behind the scenes kind of thing. Whereas Ron Perlman's book, Easy Street is more of like a look into the man himself, not just the actor, not just the industry, but who he is as a person, his life, his family, and even like into how he thinks and views the world and how that affects him and his psyche. So that's what I found super interesting about this book is how honest and open he is about who he is and like how he He doesn't sugarcoat anything, which is really refreshing. He's just like, basically the whole book is like, fuck you if you don't like this. Like, I am who I am. Deal with it. Like, that's literally like the whole vibe of the book. And I kind of dig it because he's just like unabashedly himself. And he's like, this is what happened. And it was really shitty. And I tried to kill myself one time. And like, I've been to those dark places and I am in therapy and therapy did help me. And I have mental illness that runs in my family and I might've made it through being um, manic depressive, but my brother didn't make it. Like he tells you all these like things that like most people would leave out like that shit, like that shit that you wouldn't really want to talk about, he talks about. And of course he goes into like his time on Beauty and the Beast, his time meeting Merlin Brando for the movie, um, The Island of Dr. Moreau. He talks about meeting Guillermo del Toro and how that meeting changed his life. He talks about Alien Resurrection and like all the movies he's been in and Hellboy and Sons of Anarchy and all of that shit. And he talks about it. He talks about that, which is like, you know, what people are coming for. They're like, ooh, I want to know like the behind the scenes actor reality show bullshit. But he also talks about his real life and like his wife, his kids, his struggle with depression, his um, struggle within struggles within his marriage, his, um, constant feeling of not being good enough or strong enough or successful enough ever and like he doesn't and his struggles with feeling like he didn't deserve anything and it's a really great book because you can identify with those struggles like for me he talks about how he was out of work for long stretches of time. Like he would be home and the phone wouldn't ring for like two years. And he would just feel like the world forgot about him. And like he, he would never work again and that he would never, and that he didn't deserve to work again and that he wasn't good enough. And he would just feel so shitty after like being nominated for an Emmy at one point to like being stuck at home, trying to figure out how he's going to pay for the fucking mortgage. And I identify with it because, you know, being disabled, I'm always stuck at home. Like it's really hard to feel like what you do is important when you can't even like get out of bed because your spine doesn't feel like working that day or it's too painful to walk or um, your CFS um, makes it so you can't, you don't even have the strength to take a shower. Like his honesty in this book is refreshing and it's real and it's palpable 
and I like the way he tells his own story. So like anybody, I don't feel like anybody could have read this audiobook because the way it's written is the way he talks. So I feel like the only way, the best way to read this book is to listen to him tell it to you. And he has his like New York accent and he like curses throughout the book. And it's just like a no nonsense, fuck you, like New York kind of thing throughout. But he's also like this gentle outlook. I liked that he wasn't afraid to be damaged. He wasn't afraid to be himself. He wasn't afraid to talk about his therapy or the fact that he was just like a mess. He wasn't afraid to go into what he did for therapy. He wasn't even afraid to bring his own therapist into the book. At one point in the book, he has his therapist write a letter for us, the reader, to learn how he has progressed and how he has grown since first starting therapy to like now when he wrote the book because I believe he wrote the book like 2015 and it was published this year so I like all of that and I like that he talks and talks about in depth the pitfalls of like having 15 minutes of fame when he was doing the beauty and the beast he got emmy nominations golden globe nominations he was on magazine covers they were taking him to movie premieres he was meeting like um the brat pack and like frank sinatra and all these people then all of a sudden when the show's canceled boom he's stuck at home trying to figure out how to pay the mortgage he's got two kids he doesn't know what he's doing all of a sudden he's 40 and out of a job and just like spiraling 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 down and I like that he shows like the highs and lows of being an actor and how especially like a character actor how he is because he is known for his prosthetic work for the most part in films like he's known for being the guy with the shit on his face like he was in uh what's that movie called quest for fire and he was a caveman in that movie and fucking the makeup for that you didn't even know who he was under that and because of that though he got like beauty and the beast and because beauty and the beast and like all the innovations and the molds of his face and all of that got him to meet Guillermo del Toro who was into the makeup art and the sci-fi makeup and all that shit which like spiraled him down to do the island of Dr. Monroe which spiraled down for him to do like Hellboy so like even though like there were all these pitfalls and all this like sadness and stuff it also shows that his story shows that things kind of happen for a reason or at least the way his life played out. It all happened for a reason. And if he didn't do one thing and it got all fucked up, then he wouldn't have gotten in the end Sons of Anarchy, which is like one of the most popular things he's done. But yeah, overall, the book is amazing. And I'm just rambling about it. But I really enjoyed it. Like, to the point where even if I fell asleep with it on, I would wake up and rewind it to listen to what I missed. And I would re-listen to it all. So I've kind of read the book twice, just having to do that over and over again, because I would listen to it as I'd go to bed. My main problem with the book was towards the end, like the very end, like the last 20 minutes of the book, which is weird to have to say, the last 20 minutes of the audiobook. I was turned off because he's talking about how kids these days aren't like they were back in the day. They don't have any values. They don't, when they say something, they don't do it. Like they've lost the dignity of the old days of like the man's man, like I promise something to you I keep that promise if I say something I'm gonna do it if we're friends we're actually friends like the whole traditional way of thinking he's like we our generation my generation has lost that and is and instead like 
we're stuck with like reality TV and we're like this lost generation with no values and no one to look up to. And he and like and how like Trump and like the whole nation's basically falling apart. It was this really, really dark um rant at the end of the book like 20 minute rant and I just turned it off because I couldn't like with having to see it in the news every day and being a black woman and having to like see the decay of the country or whatever and like white supremacy coming to the forefront even though white supremacy is always around but it's like becoming more acceptable to be a white supremacist and a Nazi and all that and sh- with Charlottesville and with the police shootings and with all that other stuff and Donald Trump in office and the Zeno, the rampant xenophobia and all that bullshit. I could not listen to him just rant about it. Cause I was just like, he's coming from a very privileged place at the end of this book, which he acknowledges. But at the same time, he's coming from a very privileged place. He's a white man a white cis man in America. So like he happens to be, his wife is a black woman and his kids are black. And he's trying to speak from this like privileged, like the, the world is fucked up and all that. But the rant he is giving about how we don't have like the traditional values of back when his dad was like around, like the, tr- the traditional values that his dad taught him. I just kept thinking, this isn't for me. <laughs> Because the values and like the shit he's harking back to is a time when that's similar to this, basically, like because his parents were around like, yeah, during the Depression and stuff. The 30s wasn't good for black people. You know what I mean? Like, so he just went on this rant about how like this generation is lost and how we have like the Kardashians to look up to or whatever. And there's no one to save us from ourselves. And we're basically the world's going to end and everything sucks. And it was like the most depressing thing ever. And I just kept getting more and more upset. It went from this hopeful, like you can fight mental illness and life things happen for a reason and just be patient and work hard and hone your craft to you're doomed. Your generation is bullshit. You guys don't mean anything. Like it was just like, it went from being a really good thing to woo at the end of the book. And I was like, man, I'm gonna turn this off and just remember how dope this book was before he went on his like political rant at the end. So that's my only critique of the book is like, sometimes he'll go off on these tangents Or he's talking about like metaphysical stuff and that has to do with his therapy, which is fine. But he'll go on these like minor rants about like society and who we are. It's like the later half, latter half of the book, like after his midlife crisis, he just keeps going on these rants. And at the end, it's just one for like the last 30 minutes of the book is just one giant rant about how everything is going to shit and my generation we have no balls and we can't stand up for things that matter we just sit back and like zombies hang out on our phones which I completely disagree with because there are people out there doing things and fighting to be heard and trying to be to make a change in this country But like, I digress. That's not what this podcast is for. But I just want to warn people at the end of Easy Street, he does go on this crazy ass rant that does get uncomfortable. And I'm not about that life. So everything up to like the last 30 minutes of the last chapter. Good book. Great book. Can get a little rambly at sometimes get a little metaphysical and weird and psychedelic. But that's okay because that's therapy and his experience with it. But the very fucking end, though, watch out for that shit because that shit will just get you all fucked up. I'll leave a link in the show description down below, down with like how you guys can contact uh, contact me or hit me up on Twitter if you guys want to follow the conversation or uh, talk about 
the books in this episode, you can hashtag any of your tweets, the Black Bibliophile Pod, and I'll see it. I like to see you guys interact with me. Um, you can follow me at the Black Bibliophile on Twitter. That is T H E B L K B I B L I O P H I on Twitter. So. And if you want to email me any suggestions or your thoughts or whatever, uh, you can email me at theblackbibliophile at gmail.com. So yeah, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next week. We're going to try to make this podcast weekly since I have a lot more time to hang out and chill. So next week's episode, I'll be talking about another fun uh, fantasy book. So yeah, see you next week, guys.